Three, two, one, action! Now, fair Hippolyta, our natural hour draws on apace. Four happy days bring in a new moon, but only thinks how this slow old moon <laughs> wanes. She lingers my desires. Four days will quickly steep themselves at night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword, and won thy love during thine injuries. But I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with re revealing. Revelling. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegis. What's the news with thee? For the vexation come I, with complaint, against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. <laughs> my noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. <laughs> and my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law, immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. To your father should be as a god. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. Oh. So is Lysander. But I beseech your grace that I may know what may befall me in this case if I refuse to wear Demetrius? Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Take time to pause and by the next moon, the sealing day bewitch my love and me forever for everlasting bond of fellowship. Upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will or else to wed Demetrius. <laughs> Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander yield thy crazy title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Mm. Uh, let me have Hermia's. Look, I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. <laughs> my love is more than his. Oh, my <laughs> fortune's every way is fairly ranked. Demetrius, I love out to his head. Made love with Nader's daughter, Helena, and won her soul. And she, <laughs> sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought to have spoke therefore, but... Being over full of self-affairs, my mind did lose it. But Demetrius, come, and come, Aegis, you shall go with me. Come, my Hippolyta, what cheer, my love. Demetrius and Aegis, go along. I must employ you in some business against our natural, and confer with you of something nearly that concerns yourselves. With duty and desire, we follow you. <laughs> <laughs> Remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. Fair gentle Helen, Hermia, may I marry thee. <laughs> and, the, the, and to that place, the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. Steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, where I did meet thee once with Helena, will I wait for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by. Uh, by his best arrow with the golden head, 
by the simplicity of Venus doves. In that same place thou hast pointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. He promised love of the of Helena. God speak for Helena with her way. Call you me fair, that fair again unsaved. Demetrius, 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 Lotus and your tongue, sweet air, more tunable than lark to shepherd's ear. Oh, teach me with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns would teach my smiles. I give him courses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hates me. Take comfort. He shall no more see my face. Like Sunday, my soul would fly this place. Helen, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth hold her, her silver visage in the watery glass, Athens' gates we have devised to steal. And in the wood, there my Lysander and myself shall meet, and thence from Athens will fly this place. Farewell, please. Well, farewell, sweet Plato. Pray thou for us. And good luck grant thee, thy Demetrius. Helen, and you, and you want to hear Demetrius do something. Some could be. Through Athens, I am thought as fair as she, but what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. I will tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood tomorrow night will he pursue her, and if I have thanks, it is a dear ex famous. But here I mean to enrich my pain. I have recycled it on and back again. Is all our company here? <clears throat> First, good Peter Quint, say what the play treats on, and then read the names of the actors, and so grow to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I saw you. And a merry. Now, good Peter Quince, call for all the actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves. Answer as I call you, Nick Bottom, the weaver. Ready, name what part I am for. And you, Proceed. Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. Yes. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? <laughs> a lover that kills himself, most gallant for love. Mm. <laughs> Brought his flute, the bellows mender. Hey, Peter Quince. Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. <laughs> Nay, Faith, let not me play a woman. I have beard coming. That's all one. You shall play it in a mask, and you may speak as small as you will. Robin Starveling, the tailor. Here, Peter Quince. Robin Starveling, you must play Thisbe's mother. Tom Snout. The Tinker. Here, Peter Prince. You, Pyramus's father, myself. This be's father, Snug the Joiner. You, the lion's part, and I hope here is a play fitted. Uh, have you the lion's part written? Pray it, pray you if it be, give it to me, for I am slow of study. You may do it exempt and poor, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion too. I will roar that I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the duke say, Let him roar again! Let him roar again! You can play no part but Pyramus, for <laughs> Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a proper man as one shall see in a summer's day, a most lovely gentleman-like man. Therefore you must needs play Pyramus. Well, I'll undertake it. Masters, here are your parts, and I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to con them by tomorrow night and beat me in the palace wood a mile without the town by moonlight. There will be rehearsed 
for if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company, and our device is known. In the meantime, I will draw a bill of properties such as our play once. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and 